afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the regular council meeting, City of Gulf Shores. It's September 13th, and I will call the meeting to order. And uh, at last, ask Senior Minister of St. Andrews by the Sea, Larry Wood, to help us lead us with the invocation. Thank you so much, Mayor Kraft. May we bow together in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the after a, a busy summer with so many guests in our community, now the streets are a little more calm, and we can appreciate all over again a, a fresh way to help bless we are to be here. And we thank you too for this regular exercise of what it means to be community, to come together in this room, to hear, use, to celebrate, to step forward to come to good, solid community bank decisions. We have, we thank you for those in leadership in this community, for the responsibilities of the shoulder. We thank you for the first responders and many others who are working so hard on our behalf. And we pray blessings upon one another, upon all in this town. I ask these things in the name of the God of all people, and also in the name of my Savior. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Larry. Well done. One of you call roll, please. Mr. Garris. Here. Mr. Sinet. Here. Mr. Harris. Here. Dr. Dykin. Here. Mr. Jones. Here. Mayor Kraft. Here. First item on the agenda this evening is uh, six sets of minutes to approve. We've got several uh, regular meetings in there, but we had a hurricane preparation. We had a legal counsel with our attorney. We had uh, uh, other issues that had to be discussed in private uh, with our attorney in, in special session. So. We're going to do them all, though. So the the first one to to con uh, minutes to approve and consider is on August the, uh, the 23rd, the regular council meeting of that day. Motion to approve August 23rd, regular council meeting. Second. I have a motion to second approve these minutes as presented. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? These minutes are approved. The next uh, set of minutes is from August the 29th. This was an emergency council meeting uh, Council meeting that was hurricane related. Those minutes are presented also. Move for approval of August 29th emergency council meeting minutes. Second. second. A motion and a second to approve these minutes as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. Two abstentions. Thank you. Duly noted. The next uh, was uh, an executive session on August the 31st. Move for the approval of the minutes of the August 31st, 2021 executive session. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve these minutes as presented. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Those minutes are approved. The next uh, uh, set is the, the same night on the 31st, a special meeting. Uh, uh, those minutes are presented also. Move for the approval of the August 31st, 2021 special meeting. Second. Have a motion and a second to approve these minutes. Any discussion or comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Those minutes are approved. The next set is a special meeting minutes of September the 7th. We presented for discussion approval. Move for the approval of the minutes of the September 7th, 2021 special meeting. Second. Have a motion and a second to approve those minutes. Any discussion or comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And finally, the last uh, Monday on the September the 7th, the council work session meeting minutes. Motion approved September 7th, 2021, council work session. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Those minutes are approved. Next item is the approval of expense vouchers in the amount of $1,366,627.35. Uh, yes, sir, Mayor. Um, $60,000 were for Bodenhammer renovations. $90,000 was for insured Sally repairs. 
and 314,000 of those expenses were for capital projects, including County Road 6, Highway 182, Beach Walking District, and um, the medical facility. So the total in uh, non-operating expenses was 464,249, which made the net operating expenses $902,000. Thank you, Cindy. Move for approval of uh, said expense vouchers. Second. I uh, have a motion to second to approve this expense vouchers as presented. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Those expense vouchers are approved as presented. The next item is we have a presentation from Deputy Police Chief uh, Dan Niedermeyer and Fire Chief of Operations Robert Rowland. Afternoon, Mayor, Council, Ms. Wanda. As you all know, we're coming up on the one year anniversary of uh, Hurricane Sally that hit us here in Gulf Shores. And what a lot of people don't realize is in the immediate after, uh, aftermath of the hurricane, we at the police department received a tremendous amount of support and assistance from law enforcement agencies and first responders all across the region. After the hurricane, we decided that we too were gonna participate in a form of aid to help those who are affected by a hurricane. So the Gulf uh, Police Department Police Association held a golf tournament to partially raise funds for, for what we could do. So we have, uh, this year we sent a group to Hammond, Louisiana. There were 11 of us that went. There were five from the fire department, four from the police department, one from public works and one from the IT department. And I'll explain why all that was so important in, in here in the next few minutes. Our whole goal is to be self-sustaining. We had a lot of people that showed up here that showed up with a need. Our goal was to show up and be self-sustaining and be able to handle our situation. And because of your generosity and the, what the, the city provided to allow us to go and some of the equipment, we were able to do that. Additionally, Lee Steiner loaned us a skid steer that was instrumental in us getting done what we could because we would not have been able to do what we eventually were able to do had we not done that. Jonathan from Public Works came and we immediately had an issue with our generator. Rather than call somebody, he fixed it. So here, Robert's gonna give a little summary of what we, what we did while we were there. So yeah, this is uh, us kind of getting together the first day we were there, it was Wednesday with the uh, fire chief. We'd already met with the police chief. Kind of got a list, kind of got a name of all the people that were affected <clears throat> the worst from the first responder list they had. Um, this is us over at a meat fire department. Uh, this job here, I think we've got some more pictures on, if you can see that one also, uh, may have been close to maxing out our limitations of what we could do with the equipment we had, but I'm glad to say we got it done. This is uh, Officer Eric Watson's house. Uh, he hadn't been home yet at this point. Uh, he came by to check on it for one second. Uh, this is a very large oak tree that was on his house and inside of his house. Uh, we were able to get it off. It took some time. Uh, on that right picture, we're actually rebuilding the ridge there so that we could tarp it to try to keep any further water from getting in. And this is a uh, firefighter Skip's house. Uh, he had a lot of damage as well. Uh, the most damage he had was in the back of his house. Uh, this is going to be where it was on top of it. He had a big camper back there, which we'd already pulled out uh, prior to this picture, but uh, probably a 100, 150 foot oak tree was through his shop there and on his camper and on some other trailers. We were able to get that off and uh, free all that for him. And this is just another example of one of the other things we, we came into. Uh, our biggest thing when we went there was to get trees off of houses, tarp houses to keep any further damage, get trees off driveways. We were able to get first responders in and out of their house to get back to do repairs. So I mentioned before that we had uh... We brought some key elements. So the probably the biggest key last Saturday was we started early in the morning so we could finish off the list. We brought Mike Holly, our, our IT guy with us. So we were, were able to take in a little college football last Saturday. So it wasn't like we suffered the entire time we were there. I'm a Miami fan, so I don't watch much. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all we have. If, if you all have any questions or anything else, we, we do truly appreciate it. As you know, after Hurricane Sally last year, because our officers in the fire department uh, we're able to stand up and work the checklist and uh, checkpoints and do all that. We had no cases of looting here in Gulf Shores. This allowed them to minimize their looting cases. 
the one case of theft that we did have go on here in Gulf Shores was a couple of people who decided breaking some cars down at Tacky Jack's. Let's just say they were met with an overwhelming amount of force that day <laughs> um, because we had plenty of officers on duty that didn't have to worry about that. We caught them before they left town. Okay, and thank y'all for volunteering to do that. And I, I think kudos to y'all. Thank you. Make sure that gets on our website and let the, let the world know exactly you know how fortunate we were to have the help we had number one in thanking them appropriately for helping us and then our willingness to go out or their willingness to go out on their own and, and, and repay the favor. So thank you guys for doing that. Brett, you've got a public assembly permit in addition to talk about? Yes, sir. As we reviewed last Monday, Dennis Young with the Robertsdale Rotary Foundation has once again applied for a public assembly permit to host a 5K in one mile fun run in conjunction with Lulu's. It's the Docks Hot Trot for ARC. The proposed date is November the 6th at 8 a.m. And this is a run that's been uh, well established in our community for a number of years. Um, the route runs from Lulu's restaurant uh, eastward into the airport business and uh, aviation park rotates and rolls back to Lulu's where the after event takes place. The application has been through the um, oversight of all of our departments and it's recommended approval. Thank you, Grant. Council, any questions or comments? Move for the approval of public assembly permit application for Docs Hot Trot for ARC. Second. I have a motion and a second to move, approve this public, public assembly <clears throat> permit as presented. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That public assembly permit is approved as submitted. Thank you, Grant. Brandon, you've got resolution 6451, and uh, I'll let you tell us about that. Mr. Yes, Mayor, last week I updated in the council about a property on 300 Sunrise Drive that were declared a nuisance, unsafe, and <clears throat> kind of gave you the background of the property owner. Um, and we left it last week that the property owner was going to present a plan to staff, and I would present that to you guys. And she did, in fact, that afternoon send a plan that we found very vague it only considered two steps and um, two phases in the project didn't have really defining dates involved in her plan one was she wanted a few weeks to scavenge the property for any wood that she may want to refurbish and the second phase was to demolish the structure uh, she did ask for the six weeks and after reviewing it we feel like 30 days from the date of the adoption of the resolution tonight would be plenty of time to have that property, the structure removed from, from there. Um, we did get some feedback from neighbors with concerns that if we were to issue this permit to a property owner to demolish their own structure, how would that affect the environment? How would it affect neighboring properties? State of Alabama does allow a homeowner to obtain prop <coughs> permits for anything relating to single family structures, whether it's to build it or demolish it. So the homeowner can obtain this permit. We will make sure that they put all the safeguards in place to protect the environment and also those neighboring properties that the code allows for us to do. So with that, what I want to do is recommend to you tonight to adopt a resolution that will allow us to enter into an agreement with Steiner Services, not to exceed $12,000 to begin 30 days from tonight. So this will allow Ms. Watson 30 days to demolish the structure or either scavenge any products that she wants from that structure. And then at the end of 30 days, it will allow us to go in and make sure everything's removed. So any questions? Council, any comments, questions? Yeah, but when a property is required to be uh, demolished like that, Brandon, does our ordinance address foundations? Would it require her to re remove pilings and foundations and, and restore proper drainage and the condition of the site? What? How does our ordinance address those issues? Our codes and ordinances state that the structure must be removed. And 
the way we interpret that is that a foundation is part of that structure. So whether it's a concrete foundation, piling, support foundation, we require every portion of that structure to be removed from site. What about septic tanks? Septic tanks in those situations in the past, we've actually coordinated with the county health department and they typically fill those in. They'll actually have them pumped out and filled in. One of the things that we do require prior to issuing these permits is that the Baldwin County or our utilities board signs off on it or whatever utility may be in place. And also EMC signs off saying that power's been safeguarded, plumbing's been disconnected. So we make sure that ha that's in effect. And we also coordinate with the county health department whenever there are septic tanks on site. Thank you, Brandon. Any I'm, questions for Brandon? I'm assuming when you say foundations will be removed, that's not a road by and look at the house. That's not cutting the pylons off at the ground. That's pulling the pylons out. That is that is our interpretation of that, Mr. Gass. So Brandon, will this ordinance allow for, say she's like 98%, 99% complete at the end of the 30 days. Will it give you a little discretion to work with her a few, few more days to get the other one or 2% demolished? <sighs> the intent of this ordinance is at the end of 30 days that we can send our contractor in and go ahead and clean it up. Okay. Um, that, that is the intent. Now, if it's just a few things here or there that make sense to let her go in, That's I'm sure that we can, but the intent here is to make sure that we're able to make sure that site is cleaned up after day 31. And I would think that if there were a little bit left and she hadn't gotten it done, we're going to get it out regardless. Yes, sir. And that way we know, because we got the neighbors out here that have, have lived with this for a long time. And I'm going to give you all, if you've got any comments on this decision uh, before we vote on it, I'm going to give you another chance to talk to us. So I, I think that 30 days, we immediately clean that up, regardless of what she's got left and make it clear. I, I, I like that. And, and, and you bring up the neighbors and I, and I do want to, I'm very appreciative of how, how the neighbors, neighbors have been dealing with this process and coordinating and the communication back and forth with me. Yeah, I agree with Mayor Kraft because I think Ms. Sanders emailed me at least two months ago talking about this property. It may have been three months ago. And this has been a long drawn out thing. So I'm, I'm agreeing it. day 31, get it cleaned up no matter what. I agree. And I have a question. I know when you uh, discussed this last week, uh, there was an additional property that's dilapidated as well. Are we doing the appropriate measures for these other properties in that neighborhood that are in a similar condition, maybe not as severe, but still uh, needing attention? We are the neighboring property at 304. We actually went in and we removed some of the vehicles that uh, were no longer licensed, tagged appropriately. We have received bids for actually going in and cleaning up those properties. And we've actually issued citations to the property owners. And I know there's been some, a lot of going through the court process has kind of taken longer than what we'd hoped for. But yes, sir, we are dealing with that st structure as well. Great, thank you. Well, we and hopefully we're doing this throughout throughout our entire community, not just that neighborhood. Not just that when we There's other areas and, in the city that that have that kind of need as well. And I, I think we should aggressively pursue that. And and we need to clean up these dilapidated structures in our community. And it and like I started last meeting off last Monday, we teamed up with the zoning department and code enforcement, and I put our inspectors being they're out in the field so much more and having so many more eyes. We created a list of properties throughout the city that we've been able to go in. And I, I think we're making a big difference around not just that one area, but throughout the entire city. And just one other comment. Um, I know we're talking about single family residents. I, I don't know if this is applicable to businesses that may be in disrepair as well, but I think that's something we all look at and consider as well. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Neighbors, have y'all got anything that you'd like to comment? On this, I, I feel pretty confident this is going to happen, and we are, are really appreciate your patience and communication with us, and thank you. But if you got anything you want to say, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you all for what you're doing. Got it. That's Resolution 6451.
Motion to approve resolution 6451. Second. second. I have a motion and a second to approve and adopt this resolution as presented. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 6451 is approved and adopted. Thank you, Brandon. Next, we have resolution 6452, Mr. Griffin. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, this is for business license uh, revocation uh, public hearing that I'm requesting that we reschedule from tonight to uh, January the 25th. Uh, we've been working uh, with uh, the landfill people. Uh, today, our surveyor uh, was out on the site and verifying heights and uh, uh, from some drone uh, photos that w were taken uh, a couple of weeks ago. Also, uh, uh, the city engineer is reviewing an expansion plan that they presented and comparing that against uh, some of the rights of way that are needed uh, for the road network out there. And the most particular uh, thing is between the expansion uh, that they're uh, wanting and the existing landfill condition. Uh, he's ver the city engineer is verifying what the ca cap uh, uh, costs are to finalize that site and what bonding is uh, necessary to be put in place uh, in conjunction with that. So, uh, uh, so most of this work is right now with us. So I would recommend that uh, I, I said the 25th, uh, uh, we moved the public hearing to September the 27th, 2001. September the 27th. Uh, and, and they are not operating and they will not operate that's until correct. It, there, there's nothing new going in there. So that's uh, resolution 6452. Move for the adoption of resolution 6452 and waive its reading. Second. I have a motion uh, and a second to approve this resolution as presented. Any discussion or comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 6452 is approved and adopted. Next, we have resolution 6453. Mark. Sir, uh, just remind everybody this is to purchase mast arms uh, to be uh, constructed for a new signal that will be located at East 2nd Street and East Highway 182. This is on Beach Boulevard. Uh, They're in front of the public uh, public beach access for residents and across the street is uh, Gulf Island Grill and Hooters. So this is the, uh, I think if you wanna pull the map up. But this is just to purchase the uh, mast arms and there are no changes from uh, last week's presentation. Thank you, Mark. That's resolution 6453. Move for the go ahead. Move for the adoption of resolution sixty four fifty three and waive its reading. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve and adopt resolution sixty four fifty three. Any further discussion or comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Sixty four fifty three is approved. Mark, you got, you got another one? Yes, sir. Uh, before going, uh, Councilman Garris had asked last week regarding uh, the additional southbound lane that we're working on for highway 59 as part of our bill grant program if we were, we were looking specifically at 20th avenue as well as uh clubhouse drive and i knew i could confirm last week that we are looking at 20th avenue and also i talked to the engineers and every intersection is being looked at for improvements but clubhouse drive is also being looked at for uh signal improvements as well at that intersection to help with the congestion All right, well that, uh, my second item tonight is the uh, drainage maintenance bid from McElhenney Construction. I'm recommending awarding it in an amount not to exceed $150,000, which is based on the uh, drainage maintenance budget that Public Works has. Uh, as, as I stated last week, um, these services will supplement the Public Works Department and Noel Hand, the Public Works Director, will be identifying areas of need and will be directing the contractor at his discretion is where he needs them to perform. Thank you, Mark. That's resolution 6454. Move for the adoption of resolution 6454 and waive its reading. Second. A motion a second to adopt this resolution as presented. Any discussion, comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
6454 is approved and mark you are going to watch carefully this is a pretty high unit cost yes, bid it is to make sure that this is working efficiently we're not committed to do 150 this this no. is we we can just can't go more than 150 that's correct so you're Absolutely. going to monitor how this is going and if it's accomplishing our goals yes thank you next we have uh you're up again with 6455 yes this is uh to approve a drainage study for the Jack Edwards Airport and those costs are to be split 50-50 with the Gulf Shores Airport Authority. Uh, our recommendation is approving a drainage study in amount not to exceed $20,375 which is one half of the total cost of the study uh, for Barge Design Solutions and they'll be evaluating the perimeter drainage systems for Jack Edwards Airport uh, looking specifically at areas that may need improvement or upsizing to prevent uh, flooding of the tea hangers uh, in major rain events and they are also going to look at the infrastructure in and around the control tower as well as the future uh, terminal to make sure that there's no additional improvements needed in advance of those projects being completed. Will this also give us information as we start working on waterway east? And yes sir. Yeah, all of that because all of that is combined together so this is this drainage plan our portion of that will give us more information on that road correct? It will, there's two specific drainage crossings on Waterway East that's part of this, uh, this uh, study, as well as the drainage crossing that goes through uh, David Lorenz's property, which is also downstream of, of Waterway East. Okay, that's Resolution 6455. Move for the adoption of Resolution 6455 and waive its reading. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve this resolution as presented. Any discussion or comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 6455 is approved. Next item, we have resolution 6456, Chief Delmore. Mayor, the, next, the next two items are uh, really fit together. Uh, the first is to authorize you to sign a contract with Extra Duty Solutions, a provider that facilitates our officers' off duty employment and just as importantly, provides indemnification for the city and for the officers who are working extra duty assignments. Um, this has been reviewed by the city attorney. It's a no cost item to the city. Um, and then the we'll second- let, We'll, we'll move sorry. on that one, then we'll go to the next one. Yes, explain sir. that. It's resolution 6456. Move for the approval of resolution 6456 as presented. Second. A motion and a second to approve this resolution as as presented any question or comment all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed 6456 is approved and adopted chief go ahead and so part two of two is to amend the employee handbook authorizing me or my designee the deputy chief to approve off-duty assignments for officers within the city limits and if there are off-duty assignments that we approve of outside city limits, those also will require additional approval by you. Okay. It's resolution 6457. Move for the adoption of resolution 6457 and waive its reading. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve this resolution as presented. Any discussion or comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 6457 is approved. Chief, you're going to do the next one too, which is Ordinance 2039? Yes, sir. No changes to that. Uh, as you heard last week, this is simply to make appropriate, uh, appropriately equipped golf carts legal in the Adventura subdivision. Move that we suspend rules of procedure that we may consider this ordinance. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules. Wanda? Mr. Garris? Aye. Mr. Sinek? Aye. Mr. Harris? Aye. Dr. Dykin? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Mayor Kraft? Aye. The rules are suspended. We're free to consider <coughs> Ordinance 2039. Move for the adoption of Ordinance 2039 as presented. Wave its reading. Second. I have a motion and a second to adopt this ordinance as is. Wanda? Mr. Garris? Aye. Mr. Sinek? Aye. Mr. Harris? Aye. Dr. Dykin? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Mayor Kraft? Uh, ordinance 2039 is approved and adopted. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. That ends all of the new business for this evening. Are there any committee reports, Council? Mm -mm.
Hearing none, or is I haven't asked anyone from their staff if they have a report they need to give. Has anyone got anything of information that uh, that the public needs to hear, Mr. Franklin? Yes, sir. I just wanted to remind, to remind the community that this Saturday, the 18th, from 8 a.m. to noon, we will have two locations for the Alabama Coastal Cleanup. One will be at Golf Place on the West 2nd Street entrance and the, under the shade, shade structures there. And the other will be at Moe's Landing. Ask that anyone want to participate at Moe's Landing this year, bring their own kayaks and help clean up the lagoon. So just want to remind everyone of that event occurring this Saturday. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone here that had something they'd like to present to the council that wasn't able to get on the agenda? Yes, sir. Y'all decide who goes first. You both said at the same time, so come come ahead, please. Mayor and Council, thank you for uh, the opportunity to uh, address you tonight. Um, I am a resident of the city of Gulf Shores and am trying to apply for state licensure. Uh, state licensure uh, is requiring uh, fingerprints be taken. I go to the city of Gulf Shores website. It says that I can get those for free as a resident at the uh, police department. Um, when I called the police department, they informed me that they're not doing that uh, currently due to uh, COVID. As a law-abiding citizen my entire life, I find it troubling that Gulf Shores Finest would uh, not hesitate to fingerprint me if I was a criminal, but as a law-abiding citizen trying to fulfill a uh, state requirement, I'm unable to get that done. And I would ask for you guys' help uh, so that I can get that license. Thank you. What was your name, sir? I didn't uh, I'm sorry. My name is Chris Graham. That's C-H-R-I-S-G-R-A-M-M. -M. I live on the poor side of County Road 4. Thank you. Thank you for coming in and what I will do uh, if uh, I'll have our police department check through that and see if there's a way to do that and let you know. And if it can be done, I'm sure it'll help you. But I, I'm not promising it can be done, but I'm saying if it can, we will help you. Thank you for your time, Mr. Mayor. You're, you're welcome. <clears throat> yes, sir. Good evening. Uh, I'm Lorenzo Reese. And I'm a little nervous here because what I'm going to talk about, uh, it's going to take only about two or three minutes. Okay. Okay. The seventh president of the United States, Mr. Andrew Jackson, once stated that the wisdom of man never yet contrived a system of taxation that would operate with perfect equality. The statement of Mr. Jackson is still true today. I understand that we have a surplus, but we still have a revenue problem. For example, we need additional revenue to improve the quality of life, to build and maintain our infrastructure. It's needed to clean up and beautify our city and eliminate our source. Therefore, we must create a wow factor to promote and attract new businesses. An empty lot equals lost revenue. Revenue is needed to expand our police and fire department. It's needed for our schools. It's needed for administration costs, our legal battles. It's needed to, uh, for hurricane reliefs, transportation, depreciation to offset inflation, recession, and it's needed to eliminate short and long-term debt. So how can we obtain new revenue? We can train, obtain new revenue through new business opportunity. Currently, our kids and grandkids are leaving this area because they do not, uh, because of the lack of business, uh, job opportunity, excuse me. Everybody don't want to be in the hospitality industry, and that's what we mostly depend on. Increased revenue through mixed-use development. Mixed-use development are extremely important to this city. Increased revenue by providing better retail. Retail is not dead. You just ask wonder, or even ask your wife or your daughter. Increased revenue through providing better accommodation. Most of our new development today is single-family development. Okay, however, one hotel, just one hotel could uh, create more revenue for this city than the entire community of Craft Farms. 
Okay. However, most of our accommodation are poor. Um, as an example, the Gulf State Park has the, uh, the best hotel that we have. In the rest of the city, Hampton Inn has the best hotel in this city. Hampton Inn is a low-scale hotel in Hilton Hotel Change. We don't have one mid-level hotel. We don't have a upper-level hotel. We don't have a luxury hotel, okay? And, but one of those hotels alone can generate enough revenue to offset craft homes. Because see, single-family communities, single-family community, how much I love them and how much, and I live in one, I live in craft Farm. In the long run, they actually lose money for the city. But most people don't realize that. So we have to educate the public. We need a larger portion of revenues from the gas rigs. We need uh, more revenue uh, for fighting for our uh, tax uh, school dollars. Uh, uh, right now, I think that Baldwin County is cheating us. And it's hard to say that in front of the public like this, but Baldwin County is cheating us. Establish growth fund and municipal endowment. Growth fund and the municipal endowment, it would improve our debt to debt repayment rating. Once you improve a savings on your rating, that's increased revenue for the city. We can increase revenue by seeing where we are wasting money. Once you see where you're wasting money, it actually increases revenue for the city as well. There, we must create a public and private partnership. That public and private partnership can come from places like the University of Alabama, Auburn University. These people have an incredible expert that can work with Blake, that can work with people like Mark, that can work with people like Mr. Lee Jones, Andy here. They can work with us to help us to create information to help us plan our city and to uh, move forward. We could take the information that we learned, the data that we learned from these people, we could take that data and we can go forward uh, to improve our city and to help guide us in the future. Finally, I would like to say we must annex outside of our city limits. We got to do it. I know it's hard to do it, but you got to annex outside of our, civil, our city limits. And we can never become complacent again. If we become complacent again, all these eyesores that you guys are talking about, the dilapidated homes, they're going to come back again. I know. I've been involved in Detroit City for a long time because my family lives there. Detroit City was the most successful city on the planet Earth. People don't realize it was the most wealthiest city on the planet Earth. Not even New York, Hong Kong, none of those cities was more wealthy than Detroit. Detroit City now is a joke. It's a disaster now they're trying to rebuild. And so if you become complacent, this thing is going to happen again. So don't become complacent. And then the final thing I would say is this here. Work with the public. If we work with the public and educate the public about what we're doing, the public will better understand and they will accept change. If you don't educate them, they're not going to accept the change that is needed for the revenue to make this city better. Thank you. Thank you. Well stated. And I didn't hear a thing I disagree with. So thank you for that. Anybody else with any thoughts, comments? I'd just like to comment to some of the things that he said. I mean, we probably haven't been as good with communicating all the various things that are going on in the city. And uh, I think those are wonderful points that you made. And, and we are actually addressing every single one of those points that you made, Lorenzo. And so I appreciate you bringing that to the, the uh, forefront of our conversation because, you know, behind the scenes, our staff and all our departments, and I know everyone involved with the city is a, you know, concerned about those things and really addressing every one of those aspects, whether it's uh, multi-use development, whether it's, um, uh, you know, exploring other revenue sources, uh, looking at ways to decrease our expenses, looking at bond ratings, um, you know, all those things to really uh, 
upgrade the city and, and make the city the best it can be. So no one here is getting complacent. I can promise you that. Uh, if, if, if you know how often Robert texts everyone here at this council, it's several times a day, it seems like, for meetings to address all those various issues. So uh, everyone is actively engaged, all our department heads, all the department, city employees, and all the elected officials are focused on that and working diligently for the city for that. So thank you for your comments. Jason, thank you. I, I would ex I, I will promise you that it's not going to be too terribly long before we're going to have another town hall meeting where we met before we talked about all the things we wanted to do. We will have an update meeting coming before the end of the year that kind of tells you where we are and what we're doing on all these things that Jason just mentioned we're working on because there's a lot of them and there's progress being made. And I, I agree that with Jason that almost every point you mentioned we're already discussing. So thank you. It was reinforcement and that feels good to hear that the public, our, our constituents, our family here, they want the same thing we want. So thank you for that. Is there a motion we adjourn? I think, unless anybody got anything, anybody else have anything? Motion to adjourn. Motion to second to adjourn. We stand adjourned. Thank you.